Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a great project for you behind me. Let's take a look at it. This is a beautiful quilt and it is a disappearing nine patch. I've been really fascinated by what happens if on the disappearing nine patch and I've been working on that a lot lately. And so I wanna show you how we did this because we changed the whole thing up when we added in this sashing strip right here, right in the middle of our block. And so it just makes it really fun. So to make this quilt, you're gonna need one packet of 10 inch squares. And we've used Jane Austen at Home by Riley Blake Fabrics. And it's just a beautiful line. And I love how they try so hard to be historically correct. You're also going to need a layer cake of 10 inch background squares. And out of these 10 inch squares, we're gonna cut our five inch squares and our two and a half inch squares. So you'll get everything you need out of that. I also use some accent fabric. I use the gray and I use the blue here. And you need a yard and a half of both. Your border is a yard and three quarters and it's a nice big six inch border and your backing, nice backing and it is six yards on that backing. Now this makes a quilt that is 79 by 96. So it's a great big quilt, really good size. So let me show you how to make this because this is really a fun one. Basically what we're gonna do is we're going to pick one of our layer cake squares and we are gonna cut it into fourths. So all of these are gonna be cut into fourths because we are making nine patch blocks and these are actually disappearing nine patch blocks. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna put our squares out like this and we'll put one in each corner like this and in between we're going to put the white squares. So we have these backgrounds right here. It's gonna go here and then they're gonna go out here like this and down here. Now these we're cutting a layer cake into fourths and getting those five inch squares. And then also we have these background squares, I mean these uh, print squares here that we're just gonna cut like this. And because we're cutting them in half, no block is gonna touch the other block so it doesn't matter what you put next to anything. None of that matters. So you're gonna make a block that looks like this, like a big nine patch. And then what we're gonna do on that is we're just gonna cut that block in half. So I'm gonna lay this out here. And I know that these are five inches and I have a quarter inch in the seam. So what I'm really looking at is cutting this at two and one quarter from the seam edge. Let me turn that right there. So watch that one quarter and it should go all the way up and down. So we're cutting this and then we're laying this at two and one quarter and we're cutting it both directions like this. So that should give you four pieces like this. And what you wanna do is you just wanna take these now and you just wanna make a stack of these so that when you're ready to put them together, you have a nice big stack of these and we're gonna do that. So the magic of this quilt block, what makes this nine pack patch block really pop is this sashing in here. So we've added this sashing. So to make these sashing blocks, you're gonna cut a piece of blue that is seven inches by two and a half, and you're gonna cut a piece of gray that is seven by two and a half. We are going to put snowball the tops and the bottoms of these strips. And what I'm gonna do is they have to be snowballed before you sew them together because one, these go to the inside. And if they were snowballed to the outside, we could make the block and then snowball the whole thing. But because we're going outside and inside, we have to make them one at a time. So you're gonna take your blue blocks like this and you're gonna need four for each block that you make. And we should, we have 20 of these nine patch blocks back here. And so I'm gonna bring four of these um, little two and a half inch squares and I'm gonna put them on both ends but I'm gonna start with the top side. So here's my gray ones and you can see I show you this because this is that um, chain piecing where you just go from piece to piece to piece and I'll put some squares on the bottom side of this so you can see how I do that. Now, I generally do a bunch at a time so I work very hard to make sure that they are going the right way because if I'm doing them, I'm either gonna sew 40 perfect or I'm going to sew 40 wrong. And so I look very carefully to make sure that mine are going the same way. So I make my first one and then I put it here and I look at it and I say, okay, we're sewing this way and this way. And so it doesn't matter which way they go, but it matters that your sashings are the same. So on this one, 
I've sewn my seam right here this way. I'm gonna sew this one going exactly the same way. So let's sew four of these. And I am, you saw that I finger pressed that little half square triangle in half. You can draw the line or finger press. Or if you're super good at it or you have that good diagonal tape, you can just use that. I'm just gonna eyeball it from corner to corner. And I'm gonna do four of these. So I can show you how to make one block because once you can make one block, then you know that you can go ahead and make 20 of them. All right, so here's my four of my gray, if I can get these apart. And so corner to corner. And now I'm just gonna cut these apart like this. Trim and trim trim and trim and I'm also going to cut these sides off right here like this and they should go again before you cut look because they should go this way and this way top and bottom exactly the same so we're going to press these open like this let me move this out of the way and then I can iron a little better because you want to make sure you don't have any folds I had a fold in that seam and you don't want that so we're going to go ahead and clip these apart and trim off their sides. And then we're gonna sew our blue ones. All right, one more. Oh, I cut the top, but I didn't cut the bottom of that. All right, I can do that one later. Just have to look at it real good and not forget what I was doing. All right, so there's my fourth. And then we need to do four blue ones for the other side. So let me grab four of those. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little two and a half inch squares, we're gonna put them at either end, and we're gonna sew the exact opposite way. So now I'm sewing from my outer left corner to the inner right. And I'm looking at this one to make sure that I'm doing that the right way, and I am. And I literally have to do that every time or I will get it backwards. I kind of make up little mantras for myself. You know, I'm always like gray on the left, gray on the left, you know, that I say to make sure that I don't get it wrong because I am pretty angrily challenged. All right, now I've sewn two of these on the top. I'm gonna add my bottom square and I'm gonna flip these around because it's easier for me to go that direction. And I'm gonna put this one up here and I'm going to make sure again that I'm sewing the same direction. So I go start here at the bottom corner and go to the upper corner. And then one more here. And I'm only going to sew two of these because I have some already made for you. And obviously if you know to sew them opposites, then that's the whole key to this little sashing. So we're trimming this and we're trimming this and same, same. All right, so now let's press some of these open and let's take a look at what we've got here. So we've got our grays and we're just gonna stack them up here like this and this and this and then we've got our blues. And let me do this other one that I sewed here. And again, we're just trimming about a quarter of an inch from there. You can do that with your rotary cutter or your scissor, either one will work. And we're just going to iron that back, press that back right there. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two of these and we're gonna sew them together. Again, your first one is the one that, you know, you wanna follow. So our gray is on the left and our blue is on the right. And we are gonna lay these right together like this and we are gonna sew right down the side. Now you wanna make sure that these two lines match up here and these two lines match up down here. So we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch like this. And we are gonna sew right down. And this makes our little sashing block. Let's press it open so I can show you the mama moment. There we are. So this makes our little sashing block right here and it just comes together cute and you're going to need four of those for each block. Now in the very center of our block right here is a little four patch. So what I did with that is I took my accent fabric and I cut it into strips 
sewed a gray on one side, a blue on the other, and then I'm just gonna cut these at two and a half inch intervals. Now I like to cut before I iron on this. I think they lay nicer. So I take my little two and a half inch ruler and I'm just gonna make a cut and I'm gonna make a cut like this. And then I'm going to finger press this with my gray at the top on both pieces. So gray at the top. And then when you go to put them together, they will just snug up really nice together and you can make a little four patch. Now you're gonna to need to make 20 of those, one for the center of each block. And so we're just gonna sew along here. Let me make sure they're still lined up real good. And then we can press that open like this. All right, so now that you have all your parts, you have your sashing block, you have your four patch, and you have your nine patch blocks all made and cut up. Gosh, I've made a real mess here. Hang on just a minute. There we go. Let's get that all over there. I think we need this one. And nope, oh, this one right here. So now let me show you how to put together this block because it's super slick and it just goes great. So you're gonna grab four of your uh, disappearing nine patch blocks that you've cut up. And we have a butt stack of different ones over here. And you're gonna turn them so that the big square is facing the middle. So we're gonna put this one out here. Let me see if I can find another one. This one and this one. So this is how this is gonna go. And then we're gonna add those sashing blocks in there. So here's our sashing block. And we wanna put it in here like this so that, the, so that this triangle is facing the center and we'll put one in the top and we'll put one in the bottom like this. And you can sew like chain piece all your rows of these together because they just, you know, you're just gonna sew two pieces to either side and make sure that, that, that the, this inner triangle right here is by the big blocks. That's kind of my mantra that I used. Your center sashing is the same except you're gonna turn it like this. And so this block is gonna make it look like it's a square and a square. And I have one more of these over here and it's gonna to go together just like that. So these, this row I sew together separately and these rows out here I sew together all the time. All right, so let's sew this together so we can see how it looks. So I'm gonna start by doing these two rows right here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew a quarter of an inch down this block, this side. And now I'm gonna add this other row over here right here again make sure that my big block goes uh, the right direction all right there's our top row like that here's our bottom row again i'm gonna kind of line it out you know you got to make sure that you're going the right way on all of these And I know a lot of you are angrily challenged like me, so these little, these little tri tricks that I tell you help because otherwise we end up with that one block that looks all crazy and wonky and we're like, what is wrong with this picture? And then finally you see it. Or maybe you don't see it till after the whole thing is quilted. That has happened to me before. So let's just sew a quarter of an inch down this side. All right, so now we have these two done. And we're going to sew this little sashing row t together. Now, when I did this, literally I sewed all of these sections together and then I sewed all of my sashing rows together because it was easier to remember. And I always turned, so right here, you know, I was going to sew this together, but the gray is at the gray. And so I always turned it so that it was opposite. And um, it doesn't really matter because at some point it lines up again. So, uh, but that was just like a mental thing that I did because um, I'm just like that, you know, just a little crazy. All right, so here we are with this one. Now we're gonna lay this one on here. So it works for these two that you're sewing on, but when you attach it in the middle, it lines up with the color. So it really doesn't matter. All righty, so now we have this centerpiece ready and we can put our block together. So we're gonna lay this on here and these are the parts we're going to watch for. So these will want to line up these seams. will want to line up this center seam here. And those are the ones that line up. Those are the only ones. The rest of them, 
it's there's nothing that really lines up so just we're just going to start here and sew down until we hit this seam nest it we're going to nest this seam make the seams go the way you want because you can always re-iron and then this one and then we sew out to the end now we're going to add the other half to this looks pretty good so we're going to add this piece to the bottom here make sure that your big squares are headed toward the middle and we are gonna there we go line that one up line this one up and then sew out to the end all right what I love about this block is what happens when the, uh, the pieces come together and the secondary things that take place. So with this sashing, let me press it so it looks really nice. And over here, there we go. So here's our block. And look what happens. It makes that center square around that a uh, four patch just pop. And so I was going along making this quilt and I made 20 blocks and this was already such a large quilt. So I just stopped and finished the quilt, but I had leftover fabric. So guess what I did? So what I wanna show you is, is if you take these same blocks right here, these are our blocks right here, same, but turn them around like this. And I'm going to put four on either side of this block right here. And I want you to see what happens. Look what happens. All of a sudden you get a star around that four patch. So I had some extra fabric. I didn't use my whole layer cake. So I made a whole nother quilt. This is all out of that same one layer cake. And, uh, and look how different it looks. Isn't that fun? I mean, it's just a completely different looking quilt. And it's just so different and so pretty and i love it that just by the flip of a wrist we've got a whole new idea and a whole new pattern so you get a quilt and a bonus quilt and we're calling this one good fortune and those of you who are jane austen fans will know what that means but for us it was good fortune that we could make two different designs out of one sashing block so we hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the missouri star quilt company